Youth Ministry Nation, I'm AC, and this is my friend Kurt. You guys know who that is. You're wearing glasses today. I want to look like you. Nice. This nice. is the easiest way. i take my hat off. <laughs> there you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk Youth Ministry. Dude, actually, I forgot right. I had these on. Those are nice. Well, you know what's crazy? Everybody, well, you, you wear contacts or those, right? I don't wear Just glasses. Just these. I only wear these because I need to see far. Uh, yeah. See, for me, these are reading glasses. Mm -hmm. When I first got them, they were so strong when I first got them that if I looked up from my book, everything would get kind of dizzy and they were just yeah. like headache. But it's a conspiracy from the eyeglass eye doctor industry because my eyes have adjusted to these over the last year. Oh. So now I can wear them almost anywhere and I forget I have them on. Mm -hmm. So now I need to go get more potent ones <laughs> so for that reading. Actually... Yeah, pretty soon I'm going to get those Coke bottle things oh. because every year, every year my eye doctor's like, oh, you need a stronger prescription. So I try not to wear them as often as I, oh, like, yeah. You know, anyway, that's way more information than yeah, they don't. But I forgot I was wearing them. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> now you just so Mom? <laughs> so okay. Great. What are we talking about today? Today we're talking about small groups. We ended last week with small groups. Yes. Yeah. So this is kind of like part two. We're in the swing of small groups. We just did our small group training, yep. which was awesome. We're a little bit we're a little bit probably later into the game than most people in the country watching this show. Yeah. Because our school year yeah. just started not too long ago. Yeah. We try to wait a few weeks and let everybody adjust to the new school year. Parents got crazy schedule yep. already. So. Football season has to get going, all that mm -hmm. stuff. And then we launch small groups. So we yeah. haven't even officially... Well, by the time this is posted, we will have probably just launch just small started. groups. Yeah. But we just had our training. This next week we have our meet and greet where mm -hmm. everybody finds out what group they're in. Parents come and Get meet, to meet their the leaders. And, stuff, yeah. and then the next week we launch small groups. Yep. Okay. So awesome. so this is our second, it's like part two of our little yeah. small group focus. So it's part awesome. two of we're focusing on small groups. So it's an easy subject to talk about because we're quickly learning the things that we're great at and the things that mm -hmm. we're not so great at. <laughs> so yep. um, today we just want to give you just four quick things to think about. Uh, when it comes to life groups, small so, groups. Life groups is just what we life call groups them. is what we call yeah. them. But small groups yeah. is the would that be the politically correct term? Well, I, I think that's a misuse of the word politically correct. It would be the common nomenclature. It'd be the most common yeah, vernacular. Yeah. <laughs> common vernacular is small groups. That's small true. groups. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, we call them life groups. Other people call them C groups, D groups. House groups, rooted small, groups, rooted groups, whatever. Yeah. But they're small groups. Tooted groups. Um, and I think what's interesting, AC, is this: is yes. you said earlier that what did you just say? We are quickly learning what we're not good at. Yeah, that's true. Even though we've been doing small groups at Saddleback for now almost twenty years. Yeah, we've been doing small groups for student ministries. Most youth. I mean, when we when you hear, hey, today we're going to talk about small groups. There, there's nothing new about the concept of small groups. No. Anymore, right? No. Nothing new. What, what I think has happened is small groups have proven so effective in one form or another that almost every youth group in the country has some aspect of small groups. Yeah. And if they're like us, it's a never, ever, ever ending learning curve. Yeah. I mean, well, every year the we're dynamics, changing the di Yeah, the dynamics always changes. You know, from one year to the next. I would love to be like... We have a proven formula that's a plug and play every single year, and it works. And to some degree, some of the stuff we do. Yeah, I was going to say, I think we have a proven paradigm. Yeah. Or model that we think no, works. No, totally. But it's not, a, it's not a formula that if you do A, B, and C, yeah. you always get D. Yeah. It and never I, happens. And I think that's, it's, it's okay. I don't think that's a bad thing because I think the dynamics change. Yeah. Either you have more students, you right. may have more students, you may... Um, want to try new things, which I would encourage you. You can always, there's always a better way. Like yeah. you bring more people in or different people in, you know, if your team is changing, people are seeing different things. It's great to look at it and go, okay, how can we do things better? What are we missing administratively yeah. or whatever? So it's always great to do that. Yeah. So we do that all the time. Right. Um, and yeah. so we learn. Yeah. And so in, in, in this show, what we're going to do is what we have learned is over the years, as things change and the sand shifts and culture changes yeah. and we have to tweak here and there, there's probably four or five yeah. things. Probably there, there's probably more, more than that. Yeah. There's probably more than that 
Today we'll just focus on the four, yeah. what we think are the most obvious, like, gifts that we can give our leaders. Yeah. Four ways we can help our leaders succeed yeah. that have proven to kind of be timeless. Yes. While everything else changes, man, here's four things that you need that's imperative. Yeah, it's pretty imperative when we try to do these four things yeah. every year on an ongoing basis. Yeah. So why don't you take a couple, I'll take a couple, and then we'll, yeah. we'll be done. The first thing would be just being available, our availability. Um, I've learned that leaders need us more than you know, sometimes we want to give them the reins, we want to give them the trust, we want to trust them, we want to give them all of that. Um, but they need our availability, they need us to be there for them. Um, and especially in seasons where if you have newer leaders, um, you definitely want to be there for them. Even the veterans, you know, sometimes they run into things in life group or they run into things in life and sometimes they just need to talk to you or sometimes they just need um, some help or or they have an issue that they need to work out um, and sometimes we don't want to leave them on their own we want right. to make sure that we're in that conversation you know if you have a tough something tough with a parent or you know we've had issues where we've had you know parent issues and we've had to come close to removing kids because of those type of issues but um, what's great is we make ourselves available, we're able to get in those conversations early and right. we're able to save ourselves from some a, a lot of heartache and pain and even the leader, you know, we get to save them from going through some, some of the stuff that they, that could save them and you'd probably save a leader who would probably right. be on their way out. So, well, and we talk about it all the time and we want it, right? We want to empower our leaders yeah. and give ownership away and that's really good yeah. until it's not. Yeah. And when it's not good is when the leader all of a sudden feels like they're out there all by themselves. Yeah. And they, they don't have your support or you're not returning your phone call yeah. or they sent you a text message last night because they had a, a crisis show up in life group, small yeah. group, and they just need a quick prayer or yeah. a quick piece of advice mm -hmm. or a, a quick piece of reassurance that it's going to be okay. Yeah. And they don't hear from you. Suddenly that freedom that we think is awesome is really concerning. They don't. They don't want that level that much freedom. Yeah. I think the things that hinder um, our availability is when you decentralize your small groups. Oh yeah, it hurts yeah. your availability, right? Because yeah. when you have all of your small groups under the same church roof, yeah, you as a leader can jump. You get around, to see. You get and, to see it. Yeah. You can evaluate it. You can circle up afterwards yeah. and you pray can, for everything. Hey, how's it going? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Once you're decentralized, it's you got to go from house to house, yeah. and you got to be intentional. Yep. And, and then obviously the, the the size yeah. of your youth ministry. The more the more small groups you have, the tougher it's gonna be for you to feel available to your leaders, which is why we have a coaching system and all that mm -hmm. kind of like create other people to be available. Yeah. Um, other veterans. And I think another one is just the more professional you get as a youth pastor. Yeah. You know, so I've got all these other responsibilities, oh, right? Yeah. And so do you and, and so you know, the the more we're contributing to other things in the church, yeah. sometimes it's not big church, it's in a small church. Because in a small church, you're asked to be part of this team and that team and this the team. Weekend. And help and out know. here. And, hey, can you also lead worship for the adults? And, yeah. and it's really tough to be available. Yeah. So one gift that we've learned over and over and over again yeah. that we can give our small group leaders is our availability. To be available, okay. to be there for them. What's the next one? Second one is trust. I kind of mentioned that a little bit, but... Just giving them, you know, they are leading students. We do want them to be able to, you know, maneuver on their own. We want them to be able to think quick on their feet. And that means we have to trust them. As much as we want to, kind of like it's our ministry, which I think you, there's, there needs to be that there. We go back to the availability thing. You want to make sure that all the groups are going in the direction you want them grow, going into. When you're not available, sometimes... You know, you have some people that are going on their own route and you haven't known because you haven't really checked in and then you look up and they're doing something completely out of, <laughs> out of character and you all what? and you're getting fired. What? So, <laughs> so that sounds like you're speaking from, is that, that just happening? You okay? Hey, it's always yeah, okay. experience. Yeah. <laughs> um, but at the same time, you want to trust them. You want to empower. That's how you empower them. That's how you make them not just facilitators you make them pastors. They, they get into right. the lives of students. They feel invested and they can show up to the hospitals and, because you've entrusted them um, um, with that. And the more you give it to them, I can tell you this, the more you entrust or the more you trust your leaders and you entrust in them, um, 
some, I want to say like veto power, but more leadership power, um, the better your leaders are, man. Right. The, the more you don't know what they're capable of. You don't know the talents, the gifts that God's embedded in them that you just see come to light when you go, you know, I'm going to trust you to pastor this group. Or, you know, you just, you, you just don't know. You, you, have a pop, you have a pastoral powerhouse on your hands. You don't even know it. Um, but you unleash them and you give them that trust. Right. I like yeah. that. And I think, I think that's a, that there's a really interesting relationship between availability and trust. Because yeah. we have to be available to them. Yeah. But we don't want our small group leaders completely dependent on us. Yeah. Right? So part of the availability, sometimes there's a strategic time where you're not available. Yeah. Because you kind of, or you are available to answer the phone, but instead of solving the problem, you say, yeah. hey, dude, I, you're, you know those students in your small group. Yeah. You know those parents better than I do. I yeah. trust you to make the tough make phone the call to mom and dad. Yeah. I trust you to have the conversation. Yeah. You know, so you're available, but you're not, you're not doing the shepherding, the pastoring for them, exactly. because all that does is handicap them, and it, and it hinders their growth as a leader. So you, yeah. you have to be available but you don't want to be overly available because too much availability you hinders your available your ability to trust them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So gifts. We're talking about gifts we can give our leaders. Mm -hmm. Give them the gift of your availability. Yes. Give them the gift of your trust, and then I would say, give them the gift of your encouragement. Yeah. Now, obviously, the more available you are, the more you can encourage them. Yes. But how I separate those two is availability is. You're there for them when they come to you. Yeah. That's availability. Encouragement is, I'm coming to you. Yes. I am proactively coming to you, whether you feel like you need me or not, but I'm going to come to you. I'm going to cheer you on. I'm going to take you out to coffee. Yes. I'm going to be a listening ear. Um, I'm going to run interference for you. Like Encouragement isn't just, hey, AC, you're doing a great job. Yeah. Encouragement is also when the one of the elders comes into the youth room and is complaining about the dirty carpet, yeah. right? And it's a volunteer youth leader that's getting the earful. Yeah. And you get to step in and go, oh, Elder Smith, boy, yeah. I'm so sorry, right? And you just deflect, you just took it away from that volunteer. That's encouraged. It, yeah. They walk away going, oh, man. They care about me. Man, they, they got my back. Yeah. They, they, they're, that, it's super encouraging. Yeah. Um, but I think we have to be very proactive yeah. and look for ways. Very few people are just kind of automatically, not automatically, naturally mm -hmm. gifted at good encouragement. Yeah. We have, we, most of us as leaders have to kind of put it in our dates. You know, gotta learn, our, our gotta learn how to do it. Hey, don't, <laughs> Kurt, don't forget to encourage me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's, a, it's a checklist for some yeah. of us, right? Yeah. Call four leaders and thank them. Yeah. However you have to do it, do give it. them the gift of encouragement. It changes, it just changes your, you know, it just changes the leader's whole uh, perspective of ministry, the whole perspective of you know your ministry specifically, yeah. but also ministry in general. Yeah. That uh, that it's important to be grateful. Like that's what you teach your leaders as you take the time out of your busy schedule. Especially they know that you have other responsibilities. They know that you have a whole youth group that you're running, and you yeah. may only have one part timer or yeah. no part timer. And you strategically, however you have to, whether you have yeah. to pencil it in your day or whatever, yeah. Yeah. to say thank you. Here's a, you know, a sandwich I made <laughs> from the house <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> Pe peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> that does not encourage me at all. That would encourage. The heck. I, I would well, here, okay. I don't know if this is 140 but, characters. Yeah. Here's a tweet. Yeah. Here's a tweet. Sure, I just had it while you're talking. Oh, the tweet is this: When when volunteers feel discouraged. Problems are maximized. Yeah. When they feel encouraged, problems are minimized. Yeah. Right? I mean, when they're feeling disconnected and you're not available mm -hmm. and you're not encouraging me, man, every every rowdy kid in my group is super rowdy. <laughs> every uh, non-supportive parent is a crazy parent. Right. Every problem is magnified. Right? It's magnified totally because I'm, I'm, I'm feeling alone and un unsupported. Yeah. When I know you got my back. When you just took me out to coffee, when you sent me a text saying praying for you today, mm -hmm. all of a sudden those exact same problems, minuscule. Oh yeah, I can handle those problems. And you want I'm, to right. because you feel like we're a team. Right. So I'm not doing this just on behalf of me. I'm doing this on doing this on behalf of the ministry, and you see value in that. Like right. if I'm doing, if I'm a lone ranger leader, 
Nine times out of ten, I'm going to come to you with that issue because I want you to see that your ministry is falling apart and you don't even know it. No. Okay, um, so <laughs> four gifts. Yes. Your availability, your trust, your encouragement, and then now I'm just going to get super practical, super pragmatic, uh, yeah. is give your volunteer small group leaders, give them good tools. Yeah. Give them good resources to win. Give them good curriculum. Right? I mean, crappy curriculum. We all know small groups don't rise and fall in curriculum. No. But bad curriculum can really, really hinder your small group experience. Our favorite curriculum, uh, Live. We yeah. love Live curriculum, available from Simply Youth Ministry. High it's school awesome. to junior high. High school to junior high. It's unbelievable. Yeah. We are experimenting with, in different capacities, the orange curriculum. Yeah. XP3. Uh, right? XP3. Awesome. It's more video driven. Um, Simply Youth Ministry, we've done this in the past. They have a lot of video. They also have video-driven curriculum. They're more yeah. series-oriented. We've written our own curriculum. Yeah. Here's what we've discovered, at least in our setting. Our volunteers t don't, don't seem to spend a whole lot of time prepping. <laughs> yeah. We wish they would, yeah. but they don't. So we've just learned to give them good curriculum that's really easy to use. Yeah. Give the, oh, were you going to add something? Well, I was just going to say... You know, it's not necessarily uh, on the, on the leaders. You know that our leaders just don't spend time prepping. It's more of to grow the capacity of your of your group. Um, you need leaders, and so as you grow those leaders, you're not looking for the scholars. Like we have a handful that could probably oh, teach, right? Saying. Yes. But yes. if you're out there and your and your youth group is blowing up and small groups is blowing up, you may and you're still trying to, you know, well, you need to be you need to at least know how to, you know, you have a checklist of what they know about the Bible and and of course they should be knowledgeable right. and they should be right. at the same time I go I want caring leaders. And I want the ratio. So we'll the provide them so quality let's curriculum. Get qu yeah. Quality curriculum. Right. Well, and video curriculum. Yeah. And written curriculum. However we can, so well, and that even if we can expand our our yes. capacity. Yes. And even if you have leaders that do want to prep, mm -hmm. most leaders, most volunteers are going to give you two hours a week. Let's just say, right? Maybe two hours yes. a week. I don't want them spending ninety minutes of that prepping their small group lesson. Right. I'd rather have them spend those 90 minutes on the phone with kids or at Starbucks with a couple kids yeah. or, you know, whatever whatever it is, showing up to a flag football game. Yeah. I'd rather them spend those 90 minutes doing the stuff that really matters and spend a half hour just kind of praying and going over the curriculum. And, yeah. I, and live takes about a half hour to prep. Yeah. XP3 takes about a half hour to prep, right? Both. The video curriculums at Simply Youth Ministry, about a half. I mean, most curriculum is going to take about a half hour. Um, to get to get it to get what it right. I do love is like they all like the ones we've used whether it's live or we're just I've been going through XV3 a lot of it allows you the opportunity to kind of taper it make it your own right so life group leaders have live have much more so live totally yeah. because it's yeah. it's pretty much they put it out right. there so you can customize the handout and everything right. Um, and I know a lot of leaders that want more. Right. They want their leaders, which is totally fine. Yeah. I mean, you, it's 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 kind of like your paradigm. But I think give them some good stuff yeah. to work with. And so not just curriculum, but as far as tools, you know, if you read an article that you think is, you know, you find an article in USA Today about adolescent development. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Send forward that to your leaders. If you come across a magazine. Boom, you know, sit, pass that magazine around. Yeah. Buy them. There, there are so many really cheap and good little books. Yeah. Uh, Josh and Fields years ago now wrote 99, 99 Thoughts, Thoughts for Small Group Leaders. leaders. Yeah. Right? It's like five bucks. If you can't afford to buy one for every small group leader, buy a couple and pass yeah. them around. Katie Edwards mm -hmm. just came out with an awesome new book, The Skinny on Super Discipleship. Simple. We gave this to every one of our small group leaders, right? Yes. It's is, that really, is that even a book? Technically, <laughs> I mean, it's more like it's more like a sonnet, um, like a poem, like a. Anyway, I heard someone say it's, it's awesome. a two sitter. 
It's and a then about two seats on the toilet. Two sitter. Two oh. sitter. <laughs> it's a. This is a two sitter. Yeah, you can read it in two sitter. It's the best two sitter. It is. It's so. Good. It's so practical. I mean, your your leaders can learn this and be and implement it right away. Yeah. Ninety nine thoughts for a small group of these. Yeah. The same thing. Just you come easy, across quick. an Andy Stanley podcast where he's talking about some aspect of leadership. Yeah. For that, give them good good. To, what I what I like to think of is. We want to we want to give our volunteers just a quiver full of stuff, mm-hmm. right? And they pull that stuff out. This is going to resonate like crazy with some of them. Uh, an Andy an Andy Stanley podcast is going to resonate like crazy. Yep. A little word of encouragement from you about adolescent development is going to yeah. you know. And it's just we want to keep their quiver full of tools. Even if you have thoughts, yeah, like send it out yeah. with your you know your leader your leader email or whatever. Right. Just send it out, but continue to to grow because. That is a part of it. You, right. Whatever your leaders are now, you definitely want them to not just grow through experience, right. but grow through you giving them the right tools yeah. and, and whatever it is. You don't have to always pay for it. There's right. a ton of stuff well, on the internet right now. That, that, oh, it's so much stuff. On, yeah. That you can, and I would say, read through it. Whatever you feel like aligns with your ministry and wh- where you guys going, send it, pay it, for, pay it forward. Redoctor it up, however, yeah. make it. Think of every industry. I mean, not every industry. A lot of industries. Oh yeah. Have mandatory ongoing learning, right? Oh yeah. Like you have to go get recertified. Yeah. You have to go to a class once in a while. Yeah. I mean, Anything so that matters has ongoing has learning. Has ongoing learning. So you can't why stay. wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we want to provide ongoing learning yeah. for our small group leaders? Even at Burger King, that I, I used to work at five years, we had ongoing training. <laughs> Hey, I believe that. Cole works at Chick-fil-A, ongoing training. Yeah. He's got a pamphlet sitting on our coffee that table was, right now. Look, those were the best. I feel like I am the worker today because of, because of that Burger King. Yeah. And I told Cole, I said, dude, stick with it. Yeah. I bought a house because I was there for five years. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. That's pretty good. All right. Four gifts in closing. Work at Burger King. Yeah. <laughs> Give them your availability. Availability. Give them your trust. Give them your encouragement mm-hmm. and give them good tools. Good tools. There's more things than that, but I think if you can only do four things, if you can only give four gifts to your volunteers, I think those are the four that I would probably yeah. stand behind the totally. most. If you want to subscribe, what do they do? Just click that button on there, right there. Yeah. And you can go, it'll take you to our page. You can go see we've had, this is our 42nd, 43rd. Hey, look at us. Like nice. So we've been going for a minute. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's been awesome. All right. If you, if you have any questions, I'll shoot our yes. email. TalkYouthMinistry at gmail.com. You can just send us a question. Or a show topic or idea. Or a show topic idea. Yeah. Um, this is our second final on small groups. If we have any thoughts, we'll throw yeah. them on the next show. But Next you, show's topic is? It's, a, it's a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> the All mysteries right. of youth ministry. There you um, go. Or, or how to survive. I'm holding this up. How written, to survive youth ministry. It's written by our best friend. How to survive youth ministry. In 15 not so easy steps. In 15 not so easy steps. <laughs> steps that will stretch you. <laughs> All right, we'll All see right. you guys. We'll see you guys.